Okay, take number 756. So I've tried to freaking record this intro like 7,000 times and it just is not working. Like, what is the deal here? Okay, you are working now. Thank you all for joining me back on this channel and hello friends. Today, we are going to be doing a video where I finally get hip to products that there's been a ton of hype around for either a really long time or just for a short amount of time. I am going to be reviewing three products, the LA Girl Pro Conceal HD, the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, because we all know the whole world. This is the number one prestige mascara in the world. And last but not least, the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Pouch, so the newest of these three products. Um, but honestly, like I said, I feel like there's never a time where I turn on YouTube or I turn on Instagram and somebody isn't using one of these products. The whole world is using this and I'm the only one I feel like that hasn't been using them. So if you want to see what I think about it or if you are later to the game than I am, hopefully I'm not the only one, um, please go ahead and keep watching the video. But before you do that, you might as well, if you've watched this long, if you're gonna be keep watching a little bit longer, you might as well subscribe to my channel. I'm a pretty cool person. I feel like I'm pretty random. I don't really know how to speak. I ramble a lot, but I feel like I make decent content for being still kind of a rookie. Um, so yeah, I'll stop rambling now. Go ahead and keep watching the video and I will see you all afterwards. Okay, so I've already put on my foundation for this video because the foundation is not the point of this video. Um, I have already been on this foundation bandwagon, but if you do want to know which foundation I used, it is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Long Wear Liquid Foundation. Oh, yeah, everybody knows about the Urban Decay All Nighter, so that is what I use. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The color that I have in the LA Girl Pro Conceal is Cool Tan, and I got this primarily to be a highlighting shade. Um, I've used it a couple of times, but never with the intention of like really like comparing it to other things or reviewing it. Um, so this will be my honest to God like real review of it. It is obviously brighter than my skin tone. <laughs> so yes. And you all know I like a really, really bright under eye. I don't know how I feel. I think I just used a whole lot on this side. Holy cow. I don't know how I feel about the squeeze tube mechanism. Like, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it right off the get-go, but I don't hate it. Like, I think I might prefer a brush. Um, or maybe I like to use my fingers. I don't know. But... Um, I can tell already that it's going to be a little bit more of a creamy, it doesn't seem like it's going to be very matte in finish, but, and I don't think the box really said much about it. I just know it's a high definition. But yeah, so I'm going to let it sit under my eyes for a second, but I will go ahead and blend out my forehead, my nose, and then my chin. Um, and I'm just using my Real Techniques buffer brush. Another part of the reason why I did my foundation before I started the video is because, like, my skin is going through it. Um, ever since pretty much, like, I want to say maybe, like, July or, yeah, July, my skin has been breaking out something vicious. And I've got it pretty much controlled um, in the past, like, month or so, but every once in a while it starts to just react in a way that I, I can't really control and also I just have a lot of scarring right now that I'm trying to heal up so I recorded a video yesterday that I'm going to it's probably going to be actually up before this one it should be up before this one um and you'll see my skin and I feel like I was watching it when I was doing my editing and I was like oh god I don't want to show people that but I always try to be pretty transparent with you all so I will go ahead and show you that you know whatever um I'm going to use a brush to blend out this under eye area. I do like how it blends out. I could have left it on a little bit longer before blending it out, but I didn't want to risk it like drying. I don't know exactly how it works in that sense, so I don't want to go too rogue for this one. I want to give it its best shot. But it is a pretty um, look. It definitely blends out nicely. Okay. And then just to buff out the edges or anything I left kind of unblended, I'm going to take my, um, what is this, my, my Morphe M439 brush. Just to get rid of any hard edges. So hopefully that looks good. Let me not slouch. Okay, that's a nice seamless transition. Um, 
I really want to go brighter. Can I just go? I'm just gonna go a little bit brighter, just a little bit brighter. And this will not have anything to do with the review. Um, I mean, I could do a separate review on this. This is I'm gonna just put up a little bit of the NYX Total Coverage, no, the NYX Gotcha Covered Concealer, just closer to my like inner eye right there. I tell myself I'm gonna have more of a natural under eye and then habit kicks in and I just can't do it. I cannot do it. I just like a bright under eye. And I think part of the reason for that, and I feel like I've said this before, but I really honestly feel like it's because products tend to oxidize quite a bit on me. So even though they might start off really nice and bright under my eyes, and this is just any type of product, it's um, high end, it's, it's drugstore, it's everything in between, um, they oxidize. So by the time I finish with my makeup, it just never looks as bright as I want it to. So I go a step further than I honestly really need to. So fight me. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so I went ahead and I did the rest of my face because the rest of my foundation routine and my skin routine wasn't really the point of this video. Um, as far as like skin products goes or complexion products goes, I was reviewing the LA Girl Pro Conceal and I'll give you my final review of that at the very end. Um, and then the, honestly, the most important part of this video is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And I want to go ahead and get right into it. Um, my eyes have already been primed and I used my 24 hour eye base from MAC and I honestly probably having used this palette a couple of times, I probably could have gotten away with not, um, priming it because of the fact that like these, this palette is so pigmented it is so pigmented it's already messy i hate white palettes <laughs> but like just i oh i love every single one of these colors like this one is the one i'm going to be using today just look how pigmented that is like the shimmer everything is so buttery everything is so smooth anyways yes let's go ahead and jump right in i want to do the other day i did a little bit of like a, a green the other day I did a little bit of a green kind of smoky halo eye and I want to do something like that again today. So I'm going to take my 224 brush from MAC and I'm going to go in um, to I think either either this color or this or, or a little bit of both. Why not? There is, since it's a very pigmented palette, there is a little bit of fallout when you're swirling in here. So maybe just do more of a padding motion because it will pick it up just enough. And I'm going to just kind of sweep this. Um pretty haphazardly through my crease. I don't want it necessarily to be too low. Um, I want it to be a little bit higher actually because I have so much upper lid space. I like to really take advantage of that. And really, there's no rhyme or reason for this part. This is just a transition color. Literally, you could either windshield wiper motion it or you can buff it or you could, I don't know, just speckle it, but that's not as comfortable. So yeah, you just want a nice transition color. If you have a smaller upper lid space, maybe use a little bit um, less fluffy of a brush to keep it more tight in there. Like maybe like the 217 from MAC, that would work really nicely. Because uh, it's, it's still fluffy, but it's just not as big as this one. It's a little bit more tapered, so it'll kind of carve that out a little nicer for you. And then the next brush I'm going to be using, let me actually lay that one out, so I'm probably going to use it again. So this is an oldie but goodie brush. This is from one of the original Sonia Cashew collections. It's called the number 116 brush. And it's just like a, it's like a pencil brush, essentially, but like more dense and a little bit longer of a, um, what is that? What's that word? What's that word I'm wanting? Of a brush hair, fiber, brush, whatever. So we're going to go into this color. And I'm going to create that halo eye just by pressing it. I don't really necessarily want to blend it right now. Pressing it more for one, control, and then two, to kind of start to carve out where I want this to go. Okay, so I'm just doing the outer corner and the inner corner of my eye, but you'll see that I'm not coming all the way into the inner corner of my eye because I actually want to leave that blank a little just for a little bit of highlight later on. Now whatever's left on the brush is where I'm going to kind of carve the crease out slightly more with and I'm going to blend in just a minute. But I just want to get an idea of how much more product I need. So 
just a touch more. And I'm gonna go to that 217 brush. Give myself a little bit more product. We're gonna start to blend. Windshield wiper motion or buffing motion, whatever you're more comfortable with, okay? And mostly I am just moving around what is already there. I really want to make sure I dilute those edges and start to blend it into that crease color. So I might take it high a little bit, I might keep it more low, but just keep blending until it starts to take on the look that you are going for, which already it's starting to. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my 224 brush. There's nothing really on here except for what was left over. And now I'm taking it high and really making sure that transition is nice and smooth up in the upper crease area. Cool. So um, now I want a little bit more drama. So I could either go back into that green and just darken it up in the outer corners or I could go a little bit black. Um, so I'm gonna go black just to show a different type of color. And I'm just gonna keep this one a little bit tighter to my lash line. And I'm actually not gonna blend this one out as much. I'm just gonna kind of place it. Okay, so this part I'm actually gonna use my fingers for because I've really been loving my fingers with this palette. Um, and I'm going to take, so this color right here kind of reminds me of MAC Satin Taupe. Can you see that? I need to come closer without messing up the focus. So maybe let's play with that one. I'm just gonna pop that into the center. And I find when I have a really like luxe, buttery feeling palette like this, especially with the shimmery colors, just use your fingers. Like that's, that's gonna give you your most stability and it's gonna give you the best color payoff. For this type of shadow, a brush is really not gonna do that much for you. Oh, that's so pretty. And just kind of sleep it wherever you want to, but we're focusing on that halo, so keeping it in the center of the eye. I kind of like to soften the edges, and if you feel like you went too far, take your brush. I don't know, I'm not even adding any product to it. It's just whatever's left, and refocus that attention. That is so beautiful. Like, I'm obsessing. And I've actually been really into greens lately, which is surprising me. I've been into color a lot lately. So just for my bottom lash line, I'm gonna go ahead and take that same green on a define, a flat definer brush. I'm just gonna kind of smudge it, okay? So depending on how dramatic you like your eyes to be, that will determine how low you drop your green or just color in general. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the green. And then I'm going to switch to like a 239 brush and just take like a soft brown or that one, the first one that we used. I'm gonna just smudge it kind of lower because I'm okay with having a little bit more of a drop shadow down there. You guys, I'm obsessing like this. Look, I could literally just stop right here, but I do want a little bit more shape to this halo. So I'm gonna go back in with that 217. And honestly, creating a look that you love doesn't have to be very hard. It just takes like a few colors and the right technique, um, blending, i.e. being the technique I'm talking about here. Like I'm, I'm, I'm clearly obsessed with this. <laughs> Clearly, I think I want a little bit more of a pop though. So let's try, I don't want to go too gold. I don't want to go too pink. So let's, let's see what one of these is going to do. It's pretty bright. Okay, we'll see. Oh, it goes more frosty. It goes more like white shimmer up top. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. Huh. Okay, Jacqueline. Okay, Miss Hill. Um, and I actually want that color in my inner corner, so let's go ahead and just use a smaller brush. This is an this is an old e.l.f. concealer brush, which who is using? I guess this is more for spot concealing. Because I was like, ain't nobody using this type of brush for concealer, but you could be. So just take that same color, pop that into that inner corner. 
but I can already tell I'm gonna want a little bit more gold in there so I'm gonna actually switch palettes for a second because I know exactly what type of color I want let's go let's go tart tardiest pro um, and I'm gonna take this color glam let me use my finger yes so just give it a little bit more gold first of all you already know I don't do a lot of cool tone shadows but and this is already very cool toned um, I do just need a little bit of my my tried and true in there now I'm gonna tight line with my modern twist Kajal liner and I'm, well, I'm gonna tight line and waterline I said tight line then I went to the waterline oh yeah oh yeah okay mascara Here's the moment, honestly, before I decided I wanted to do a video with the Jaclyn Hill palette, I decided I wanted to do a video with the Bend and Sex palette. You don't know how long, hold on a second, let me just get it closed, okay. You don't know how long I've been talking myself in and out of buying this, and I finally just bit the bullet. Um, I think I just threw away the box the other day, but it has all these like crazy claims on it, like it's supposed to increase volume by like... 95% and it's going to increase length by like 93% and then 114% overall boldness and something crazy like that. I don't know. I'll find it for you. Um, here's the wand. If you've never used this before, my hands are dirty. Sorry. It is a, like an hourglass shape wand and it's pretty jumbo in size. My first initial thought when I opened this mascara was one, it's going to be too big for my lashes. Because I already have, like you can tell, like my lashes are short and curly. I feel like this wand, right off the bat, will lend itself more to someone that has longer lashes. Um, not even about density and not even about like spacing in between lashes, but just longer lashes just in general. But I still want to give it a shot. So let's go ahead. And just to be fair, I'm going to do one dip per eye. I normally actually will just do one dip and then just do the whole thing, but we'll just go for it. I can't lie. I've played this a couple of times with all these products. This isn't like a first impression video. This is just a review. Um, I know that I'm more comfortable using the front end of this wand because the middle of it does nothing for me. So I really have to kind of groom my lashes with this wand and really had to like prep them and pamper them the hourglass shape honestly does nothing for me it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to my lashes very much let's do a little swoop down do i think it works yeah i mean i do think it works but i mean i don't no, I honestly, okay, let's just compare. So no mascara, you can't even see my lashes, to mascara. So it's giving me a good amount of length, it is giving me more volume. But one thing I will say is that I, even though I don't have very long lashes, they are pretty dense in the sense of like, I, I don't find that I've ever had, other than one or two mascaras, I've never had issues with mascaras giving me a good amount of volume if they're intended to be volumizing, right? Um, I like how dark the formula is, like how rich it is. I like it. I like it. I don't love it, but I do like it. I like, I think I still like my upward lash more because that wand lends itself a little bit better to my lash. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on lashes. I'm going for a pretty dramatic lash today. <laughs> I've been wearing these lashes probably every single day because I'm <laughs> sorry because I'm obsessed with them. They are some of my favorite lashes. Um, they are 35s from MAC. They are kind of like a starburst you can kind of tell but I have them double stacked because one I'm extra and because two that's, that's really it. I'm just extra.
so yeah that's the eye look i'm loving it ba -da ba 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 and do some finishing touches i'll do my lip i'll come back we'll wrap this up and hopefully this video is not going to take longer than 15 minutes i don't even know what time it is right now i don't even know when i started oh dear god okay so what do i think about the la girl pro conceal hd high definition concealer i like it i like it i'd give it okay would i ow, okay hold on a second i'm just <laughs> I'm sticking I'm wearing shorts sorry <laughs> okay so this concealer was $4.99 when I bought it at Ulta that you cannot beat that price that is a really good price even my NYX concealer was not this cheap so as right off the bat I like it because it's cheap okay your girl got a budget and this helps her stick to it um I like the opacity I don't love the applicator I think I prefer like the brush type of applicator like you get from the um the shape tape um but i don't hate it it's obviously like better and more sanitary maybe than using like your fingers so depending on how clean you keep this so yes i like it i should have gone for a slightly brighter color i should have gotten two colors but it's 4.99 so i can go back and do that still so whatever um but for my everyday not so crazy highlighted eye i do like this one a lot like i said the color that i got was cool tan so i would give this concealer I'll give it a 9 out of 10. This is a really, this is a good concealer. This is really good and it's really cost effective. Um, so I approve of this concealer. Um, and it's full coverage, but it seems like you can definitely shear it down. You can shear down anything. But yes, this one I approve of. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And automatic, like, it's a 10 out of 10. It's an 11 out of 10. I love this palette. And let me tell y'all, I was so skeptical. I was skeptical doesn't even I was like you know what it's overhyped like it's not that amazing like well, what could I really have done to the formula like it's just it's just whatever this palette is going to cause me to have to go get the 352 I'm gonna have to get all the other reformulations and they're so cheap that's the nice thing about Morphe and also now they are more accessible because if you remember when I did my Morphe review a good long time ago when I first started this channel, it took me way too long to get my products. I was not happy about that. It, I'm not an online shopper because of the fact that just I want that instant gratification. The fact that I can now go to Ulta um, and get a Morphe palette or get Morphe brushes or get other Morphe products, I completely I love it. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love this palette. I recommend this for everyone. I love the color options. I love that there's matte colors and I love that there's also coinciding shimmery colors. I haven't even touched the, the purple over here yet, which I need to. I love this palette and this is definitely any skin tone friendly. So I, I will always spend my money on this palette and I think I know I will use every single color in this palette too. So yes, yes, yes. So 10, 11 out of 10. And then, as far as the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, I'm gonna give this one like a seven out of 10 because of the fact that this wand is not built for my type of lash. And that's not anything against um, Too Faced, that's just my lashes, that's just how it works. If you have a naturally longer lash than I do, you're probably going to love this mascara. As far as the claims of like volume and length and all that stuff, it absolutely works. It definitely works, it was just for my, I and for my lash, it was just too hard to make the full wand work. I only really used the front of the wand and I didn't love it for my bottom lashes. So yeah, I would still I would still recommend this. It was $23. Um which so are Mac um mascaras and most mascaras these days that are in that like high end range are getting up there, or at least like mid to high end range are getting up there. So that isn't that that price doesn't like bother me. That's just a mascara these days. So yes, but um, I mean, they are clearly doing something right because they're the number one prestige mascara in the world right now. So you got to give it up to them. So hell yeah, do your thing. I'll give it a 7 out of 10 though. I prefer my Upward Lash Mascara from MAC just because of that wand. Um, and you guys, that's it. That is my review. Those are the three products that I said I was going to use. The three products that I've been slacking on that everybody else I feel like in the world has had and has been talking about, especially those two, that concealer and that mascara, for a good long time. I am just now jumping on the bandwagon. So I hope you liked it. I will link, um, well, I will 
I will list, get your shit together. I will list everything that I used down in the description box below. If you want to know what my foundation, all that stuff was too, just ask me. I'm just going to focus on the eye stuff um, today, but I am, and the concealer, <laughs> but, um, oh, maybe I'll put my lip. I'll just, okay, I'll focus on color products today. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you like this video and also watch my last video if you want to know how I do my skin routine and what I've been using and what I've been trying and loving lately for my skin and my complexion. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye friends. So you should watch my other videos and let me know what you think. Bye guys.